The Rolling Hills Asylum was first established as the Genesee County Poor Farm. A poor farm was an institution where indigents were maintained at the taxpayer's expense. Residents included orphans, widows, minor criminals, as well as those with handicaps. These days, it is a haunted hotspot situated in the rolling hills outside of Bethany, New York. A poorhouse often resembled a reformatory, where orphan children, destitute elderly, the physically and mentally handicapped, as well as minor criminals were given a place to stay. These institutions were often created on the grounds of a working farm, where able-bodied residents were required to work to continue living there. Such farms were common in the United States in the early 19th and 20th centuries. In the early 19th century, the Genesee County Board constructed a stone building that was attached to the asylum with the purpose of confining those who misbehaved and thus began the abuses that the Rolling Hills Asylum is well known for today. The Genesee County Poor Farm was a self-sufficient working farm that spanned over 200 acres, providing food and fuel for the area. Residents of the asylum were referred to as inmates, no matter why they were housed there. The raising of pigs, horses, chickens, and ducks, as well as raising vegetable and fruit crops, canning jams, jellies and meats were all part of the daily work and chores. Those who died at the facility were buried on the property, and a cemetery was established, though details about it have been lost over time. A burying ground is mentioned on a proceeding from the late 1880s that states it was improved with a fence without disturbing the graves. The cemetery faded over time, the grasses growing over the weathered stones that once marked the final resting places of those who passed at the asylum. The Rolling Hills Asylum witnessed over 1,700 documented deaths on the property during its tenure, and it is now known as one of the most haunted site in the United States. There are a few notable tragic stories have been attributed to the Rolling Hills Asylum. Roy was a resident of the asylum who suffered from gigantism. His physical deformity left his hands and feet oversized, and his height well over seven feet. Roy was the son of a prominent banker in New York, and was sent to live at the asylum because his family considered him an embarrassment. He was brought to the asylum at the age of 12, and lived there until his death at 62. He loved opera music and was well known for his kindness. Today, his hulking shadow is reported roaming throughout the hallways. One story told by the owner of the building truly captures Roy's kind nature. She tells about running into a rat in the infirmary. Terrified by it, she screamed and ran away. The next day, she found the rat dead on the stairs, its neck broken. On the wall above the rat was a massive bloody handprint. She believes that Roy witnessed her distress and killed the rat for her. Other spirits at the asylum were not so kind. One of the nurses in the infirmary, known as Nurse Emmy, was known for her cruelty to the patients. She was feared by both staff and patients. Reports have circulated that Nurse Emmy still roams the halls of the asylum, and visitors have reported hearing cackling and banging doors coming from the infirmary. Another hotspot at the asylum, Hattie's room is famous for its elderly resident. This room is home to the disembodied voice yelling hello. This is believed to be former resident, Hattie, a blind woman who used to yell out hello all day and night to get the attention of nurses. The solitary confinement location in the asylum is one of the more sinister regarding hauntings. Iron brackets protrude out the stone walls in one small room, which was used to shackle unruly residents. The terrifying part of this is that it was not criminals who were being confined there. Those with misunderstood mental illnesses and conditions such as Alzheimer's, Tourette's, and Asperger's were taken down to the darkness of the solitary confinement pits. Today, visitors have reported feeling nauseated when entering this area, and some have even reported being hit or pushed while in the solitary confinement cells. There are countless theories as to why the Rolling Hills Asylum is so haunted. One is that this is the only home some of the residents ever knew so they have become attached to it. Some of them lost their parents, spouses, families, and built relationships with people at the asylum that meant more to them than what had before. 
many of the spirits at Rolling Hills considered it their home. As for others, the negative attachment to the property through the pain and suffering they endured keeps them confined there, even after death. Whatever the reason may be, the spirits of Rolling Hills Asylum make their presence known time and time again, their memory living on in the stories that visitors and staff leave with.